This is going to be verse by verse of Romans chapter 6. We're going to look at the subject of don't let the newness wear off. When you are born again, you, you were made new. When you first got saved, you probably threw out your rock CDs, your cigarettes, your booze, your porn, your dirty magazines. Or shortly thereafter, when you, you got dealt with by God after you got saved and He started cleaning up your life. And sometimes after this, you let the newness wear off and you let the desires of the old man take over. And you know how when you get a new car, you open the door, it looks better, it smells better, and you don't ever want the newness to wear off. Or if you get anything that's new, uh, if you get a new pair of shoes, you really don't even want to wear them because you don't want to get them dirty. If you get a new Bible, you hate when you get that first scratch on the gold part and you can see it when the Bible's closed. You just don't want the newness to wear off. And that should be how you view your spiritual life. So don't let the newness wear off. Number one, don't stain your testimony. And like I said, sometimes you get a new car. Maybe you go to McDonald's and you put the bag or in your seat and the grease gets all over your seat. So you clean your car up. But then every time your friend gets in, he thinks it looks good until he sees the stain. And that is like the stain on your testimony. You can do things in this life that will put a stain on your testimony that will stay there forever. Maybe not in the eyes of God, but in the eyes of men. They're going to always remember that stain. And no matter what, people will see it written all over your face. Romans 6, 1 through 2 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So don't put a stain on your testimony by continuing in sin. As Paul says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now we believe in once saved, always saved. That is eternal security. But we don't teach that we should continue in sin even though God's grace is greater than our sin. So we don't want to abuse the grace of God. Paul says, How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Really, doctrinally, a Christian can't live in sin because he lives in Christ. But practically, since you still have the sinful flesh, the life you live could be a life of sin. But a Christian who sins will stain his testimony. Romans 6, 3, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? So when you got saved, you were baptized into his death. Your old sinful nature is what died, and it tries to come up out of the grave. Your, your old man will try to come up out of the grave, and you just have to shoot it back down. Put a target on its head and shoot back, shoot back at it. Put it back where it needs to be, in the ground. Uh, your old man was crucified with Christ, and he's, he's hanging on a cross, but he tries to come back down off the cross. And today you have all these zombie movies and video games. That wicked stuff just illustrates the battle between the Christian and the flesh. The flesh, your old man is crucified with Christ, but he wants to come back down off the cross. So you keep having to nail him back up. You have to die daily. That's what Paul's talking about when he says you die daily. Just keep putting the flesh down. 1 Corinthians 15.31 says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. So when, you, when your flesh rises up like the walking dead that it is, reckon it dead. That means realize it's dead. It shouldn't have any power over something that's alive. The new you is alive. And there are stupid movies about people having pet zombies. That's disgusting. Where they feed it, they keep it warm, they love on it like they would their little nasty dogs. And that's just sick. Uh, there was even a movie called Warm Bodies uh, years back about how some sick, twisted girl fell in love with a zombie. But all that stuff is, it just illustrates how Christians love their flesh and they pet it like it's their pet dog. And they'll go out of their way to please it. And they're in love with it like that girl was in love with that zombie. But it's no different than petting a zombie. You have to reckon, reckon it dead. Put it back in the cross. Put it back in the grave where it needs to be. 
Romans 6, 3 and 4 says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Notice the phrase, newness of life. That's what we're talking about, is not letting the newness wear off. And now this baptism obviously ain't water baptism. But all the Church of Christ, also known as Campbellites and Water Dogs, would love to teach that this is water baptism that's putting you into Jesus Christ. But we obviously know by reading our Bibles that we don't get in Jesus Christ by being water baptized. H2O can't save me. Water in a bathtub can't get the blood applied to me. So this baptism is obviously referring to the spirit baptism because there's more than one baptism in the Bible. And when you got saved, you were baptized into the body of Christ. This has nothing to do with water. And the way that you know that if you're a Bible believer is because it says, so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. So this this isn't really talking about water baptism. It's talking about the spirit baptism. Romans 6, 4, and 5. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So Jesus conquered sin. He conquered death, hell, and the grave, and the devil, and the world. We need to walk in newness of life because we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. The Son of God was victorious over our greatest enemies. And the same God that was victorious over all those enemies lives in us. So if we are planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. If we have the same God living in us that raised up from the dead, we should be we should know that we can conquer the old man. And greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Now you can't you're not gonna be able to get to a point where you're without sin on this earth because that's not gonna happen till the rapture at the glorification when you get your glorified body. But you need to try your best to knock down the flesh. Romans six five for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So we will be in the likeness of his resurrection when we get our glorified bodies talked about in 1 Corinthians 15. It says, We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We'll get a glorified body just like he did and be resurrected just like he was. And if you walk in newness of life, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, then you're not going to stain your testimony. Keeping that excitement for the rapture will keep the newness from wearing off. The more you think about eternal things, things that really are new, like new Jerusalem, a new heaven, a new earth, a new body, all those things that are really new, That'll keep the newness from wearing off. If you just think about all this stuff on earth, stuff that's never new, never really new, maybe it's new to you because you've not seen it before, but you're just thinking about temporal stuff that's going to die and be burned up. And keeping your mind on temporal things and worldly things will make the newness wear off. You want to keep your mind on things above. So don't stain your testimony by continuing in sin. And next, I want to say, leave the old man stranded. Just like a beat-up car, the old man would leave you stranded when you served him and if you serve him. So just leave him on the side of the road where he used to leave you. Romans 6.6 6 says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. And lost people think they are free because... They just they they don't have to worry about going to church. They don't have to worry about living a good life. They don't have to worry about reading the Bible. They don't have to worry about doing all these things that they believe Christians always do. And they think they're free, but they really serve sin because they become addicted to pills. They will work as hard as they can to get a fix and maybe even steal from their loved ones to get it. But only when you get saved are you free from sin. Romans 6, 7 says, 
for he that is dead is freed from sin. See, when you got saved, your old nature died. That's what's dead. So you're free from sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. What's dead? The old nature. And it shouldn't be able to keep you chained up if it's dead. It should be in the grave. It should be hung on the cross. Romans 6, 8 says, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Spiritually speaking, I'm already in heaven in Christ. Ephesians 2, 6 says, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So I already live with Him. And soon He's coming back to get me and then I'm going to go live with Him bodily too. But I'll have my new body where the newness really won't ever wear off. And there, because there'll be no more old dead man hanging around to haunt me anymore. <laughs> Romans 6 9 says, Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. And this is why the Mass, the Catholic Mass, doesn't work, and it's of the devil. Because they act like Jesus is dying again and again each time they do the Mass. But that reverse just said in Romans 6 9, But death hath no more dominion over him. And the next time he comes, he's coming with a sharp two-edged sword, and they can't crucify him again. Death hath no more dominion over him. He got up out of the grave on the third day. So knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, let that be an encouragement to you to keep that old man dead. Reckon him dead. Romans 6, 10, For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he did it for our sins. He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He died unto sin once. It took one time to pay for our sins, and he won't have to do it again. He only had to shed his blood one time, and now he lives. And he said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and have the keys of hell and of death. And if the best way out of hell is to come to Jesus Christ, he's your ticket out. He's the one with the keys. Romans 6.11 says, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So since you have the Savior living in you, who was dead but now lives, reckon your flesh, your old man, to be dead. And the new you to be alive unto God. That is, put your new nature in charge. Put the new you in charge. Your new nature wants to do what's right. Your bad nature wants to get drunk, fornicate, be lazy, eat too much, watch porn, gossip. It wants to sin. It wants to do everything that's a sin. It wants to watch filthy junk on TV. It wants to commit fornication, commit adultery, just any sin you can imagine, even the little sins. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it's a sin. Your flesh wants to not do things that you know you're supposed to do. And you need to put the new nature in charge of the old nature. Your new nature wants to do right. Your bad nature wants to do what's wrong. And only wants to do what's right. The only time your your flesh wants to do what's right is if it helps him to do wrong. That's the only time he'll tell you to do something that's right. Romans 6.12 Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. The fact that Paul is telling a bunch of saved people to not let sin reign in their mortal body is proof that it can reign in your mortal body. You can give it... You can give in to your old man. And, and the flesh will leave you stranded but you need to leave it stranded you can give in to him as a Christian a Christian can give in to the flesh and sin and, and live a life of sin and you're just giving in to that zombie and some Christians they're like the walking dead because they haven't put the old man back into the grave in years they haven't kept him on the cross in years there are Christians who just live for the flesh. They live for the world and the devil. And some men would say, when they see them, well, they're not really saved because they're living like that. But I don't know if I'd be so quick to judge that. 
I can't judge the quick and the dead. I don't know who is saved unless they tell me yes or no, I believe the gospel or I reject the gospel. Sometimes the only way you can know if somebody's saved is by their testimony. So I do not like saying this person's saved and this person's not saved because he's doing this and he's doing that. But now that you're new and the old man is dead, the old man took you for a ride, he left you stranded, so now you need to leave him stranded. But now, the next thing I want to talk about, now that you're saved, let's talk about not driving so recklessly now. Back when I had my old car that I got when I was 16, the newness wore off, and as an unsafe person, I drove it recklessly. I didn't take care of it when I drove it. So I had bumps and scratches, and I ran off into a ditch. I hit some curbs. I hit a pole at a gas station. I can't drive good, plus I drove it recklessly. Now you're saved. You need to act right, and you need to realize that most people are watching you, so you don't need to drive so recklessly now, now that you got the new man. It's like when you get a new car and you just, maybe you, well, myself, I drove a lot slower when I got a new car. I started to try to drive better. I started to miss the bumps on the road, or tried to. Romans 6.13 says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. So before you were saved, you yielded your members as instruments of unrighteousness. So don't continue doing that after you get saved. You need to yield yourself to God because, as the verse says, you are alive from the dead. The part of you that was dead before, your spirit has now been quickened. And quickened means to make alive. And God, ma God made it come back alive in part of you. And the old man, your flesh that was alive before, is now dead. The old man is dead. Now yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. Do what the Bible says. Put the new man in charge. And don't let the newness wear off. Don't drive so recklessly now that you're saved. Romans six fourteen says, For sin shall have shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. So before you were saved, you were under the law. You couldn't keep the law perfectly. But if you offend in one point, if you just mess up once, you're guilty of all the law. So the law can't save anybody. And when you got saved, you got under grace. Grace is God giving you something you don't deserve. He gave you the free gift of salvation. Now... Since you are alive, sin shall not have dominion over you, and you don't have to be a slave to sin anymore. Romans 6.19 says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity and to iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness and to holiness. So the same way you yielded yourself to sin and let sin be your master before, now yield yourself to righteousness and holiness and let those things lead the way in your life now. Don't let uncleanness and iniquity consume you and get a hold of you. Let the Holy Ghost lead and he'll lead you to righteousness and holiness. And next I want to say, don't take advantage of the power. Like when you get got rid of your old car, it got to where it was slow, or at least mine was, and I got a new one, and it was a lot faster and better. The new man is better than my old man. I have a lot more power now than I did before. Romans 6.15 says, What then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. So you don't want to take advantage of God's grace. When someone says, some people have said to me, you believe in eternal security, which means you think you can just do whatever you want to do. Just show them this verse. It says, shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Paul says no. Just because we are eternally secure doesn't mean we should abuse the grace of God and take advantage of the power. If you got a new car and took advantage of its horsepower, then you're driving recklessly You'll end up wrecking it, and the moment you wreck it, there goes the newness. The newness has wore off. 
the moment you hit a bump going real fast and your coffee goes everywhere, there goes the newness. Romans 6, 16 says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin and of death or of obedience unto righteousness. A lost person thinks he's free because he can do whatever he wants to do, but he really is a slave to sin. A saved person has more freedom. Once you get saved and get victory over your pet sins, you're no longer having to miss work because of your drunkenness. You're no longer having to steal from your family because of your pill addiction. You're no longer having to call someone to bail you out of jail. Once you get saved, after that, you, and you get victory over your pet sins, life gets a lot easier in certain aspects. A saved man is a lot more free than a lost man. Next, I want to say keep obeying the speed limit. Keep obeying the law. Romans six seventeen says, But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. The form of doctrine that was delivered to you was the gospel. Someone gave you the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believed it. Now, hopefully, you have been living right and being an ambassador for Christ and showing people through your life that there's something different about you because you have believed that gospel. Show that you have obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine that was delivered to you. Uh, we don't show we don't uh, show our works to stay saved or to get saved. We just show them because we don't want to kill our testimony. We don't want to bring shame to His name. Uh, Romans six eighteen says, "But then, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. So you're free from sin, and now you're a servant to righteousness. Sometimes it's hard to do right." But the reward for doing right is a lot better than the payment for doing wrong. Next, I want to say the old life costed you more in the long run. My car was getting to a point where uh, it, was, it was costing a lot more money just to keep it up. So I just needed to get a new one. Romans 6.20 says, For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. When you were lost and living for the devil, you were free from righteousness. When I was lost, I could drive down the road listening to heavy metal and music with cussing and not feel bad about it one bit. Now I'm a servant to righteousness, and there's something in me that when I sin, the Holy Ghost takes a whip and beats me. Uh, Romans 6.22 says, But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So the fruit of holy living is a lot better than the fruit of sinful living. All these people around me think that they're free, and they're running around trying to get a fix on their drugs. They can't pay rent. They can't hold down a job. They can't watch their kids. They can't clean their house. They can't do anything because they're a slave to sin. But if you get up and act right and do right, then you'll always turn out better even if you're persecuted for doing right. But, not if you do wrong. You, you're not going to turn out better if you do wrong. The ways of a transgressor is hard. Serving the devil is fun at first, but then he takes away the fun. It just If you just live for the old man, stay in the old man, it's just going to cost you more in the long run. You're going to lose rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Look at what your sin is costing you. Living for God down here may cost you popularity and temporary things, but living for the flesh is going to cost you eternal things. It's going to talk. It's, if you're saved, it's not going to take your salvation, but you're going to. It's going to cost you some rewards in heaven. When you have to pay for sin that isn't under the blood, you're going to have eternal death in hell. So if you're not saved, your sins aren't under the blood. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You need to get your sins under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're saved and you're still living for the flesh, the wages of sin is still death. For you, it won't be eternal death in hell, but it'll be an early grave. Because if you live for the flesh, you'll die. 
The Bible says she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And if you don't have those sins under the blood, it's eternal death in hell. If you're saved and you're living for your old dead man, then you're going to have an early grave. You're going to get to the judgment seat of Christ and you're not going to have any rewards. And next thing I want to say is, the old man puts you on the road to destruction. Romans 6.21 says, What fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. And you could look at this two ways. The lost man who won't get saved is serving sin, and the end of those things is death. He's going to have an early death. He's going to, because bloody and deceitful men won't live out half their days, and he's going to go to hell. The saved person who serves sin is putting himself into an early grave and driving his testimony off a cliff. It's the road to destruction. Living for the old man, staying in the old man. You'll be driving down the road and your old man one day is just going to blow up on you. And what fruit had you in those things whereof you are now ashamed? I'm ashamed of my sin now. I wasn't before. I could drive down the road in my old man listening to heavy metal and Eminem, country music, whatever else bad music that was on the radio, and I would not feel the slightest bit of shame. But now, I'd, I don't even want to have the radio on if it's got filthy music on it. I don't want people thinking that I'm sinning listening to that music. And that's a big difference between a safe person and a lost person. Uh, a lost person will come out of the closet as a sodomite and say, I'm happy, I'm glad that I'm gay, I'm glad I'm a sodomite or whatever. They'll say that. And then, uh, but a person who get, who's saved and wants to do right, when they sin, they're ashamed of the sin, they don't come out on Facebook with it and say, I'm so glad I'm, I'm this or that, or I'm a fornicator or something. They're ashamed of their sin. Now, a Christian can get to a point where he seared his conscience, but for the most part, a Christian is ashamed when he does wrong, and he should, confess, he should confess his sin and forsake it, and put the new man or put the old man back in the grave, nail him back to the cross. Don't let the old man take over. But this has been don't let the newness wear off.